Hello student, welcome to the one more video session. This is Vasan Naik from Kendra Engineering College. In this video, you will be learning today register model of ARM. Register model of ARM or it's also called as programmer model or software model or sometimes in exam, uh, exam they will just ask to explain registers of ARM. So, the diagram shows the register model of ARM. So, we know uh, from my previous video I have explained there are seven different modes in which ARM operates, ARM7 operates. So, <coughs> but, so before moving to the actual what is register mode, what are those seven different modes? The seven different modes are, one is uh, system okay let me write here one is supervisor mode one is supervisor mode supervisor mode one is supervisor mode second one is uh, user mode user mode third one is a third one is a system mode system mode third one is system mode and fourth one is a interrupt request mode fifth one is a fast interrupt request mode fast interrupt request mode <coughs> sixth one undefined mode and seventh one is uh, abort mode So undefined and abort modes are error modes, error reporting mode. Uh, so these are the seven different modes. But when you switch on your mobile, first while during the booting time, it will go to supervisor mode. While booting, your mobile will be in supervisor mode. Once the mobile boots, it will be 90% of the time, it will be in the user mode. User mode is just like uh, 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 like home mode of the mobile it will remain 90% of the time it will remain in the user mode suppose if you if it wants to execute some system related calls or system related function it will move to system mode so both user mode and system mode doesn't need any interrupter so there are seven interrupter these seven interrupter takes you to five different modes seven there are seven interrupts please remember there are seven interrupts seven modes but to move to system mode and user mode you don't require any interrupt so seven interrupt will take you to the rest of the pio modes like supervisor mode irq mode fiq mode undefined mode and a abort mode so then what are those five so seven interrupts what are those seven interrupts we'll see that one also first so the seven interrupts are first one is rst second one is undefined these are interrupt i am talking about interrupt third one is uh, prefetch abort fourth one is uh, data abort Fifth one is a system abort. Sixth one is a 
IRQ. Seventh one is uh, FIQ. So these are the seven interrupts. Now, system interrupt and uh, sorry, a reset interrupt and system about interrupt. So reset interrupt and uh, system about interrupt. This one, this one. Take the ARM processor into supervisor mode. It will take the ARM processor into supervisor mode. So it will take the ARM processor into supervisor mode. Please remember. Okay. Now prepatch and data about mode. Sorry, prepatch and prepatch about and data about interrupt take the ARM into about mode. About mode. <clears throat> IRQ interrupt takes the ARM into IRQ mode. FIQ takes the IR, uh, ARM into FIQ mode. FIQ mode. So undefined uh, takes the ARM processor into undefined mode. So students, as I said here, once again, there are seven interrupts in ARM and seven modes in ARM. Seven modes are supervisor mode, user mode, seven modes are supervisor mode, user mode, system mode, IRQ mode, FIQ mode, undefined mode, abort mode. These are the seven modes. But we have seven interrupts. Seven interrupts are uh, reset interrupts, uh, undefined interrupt, uh, free fresh about, data about, system about, IRQ and F FIQ. Reset and system about takes you to supervisor mode. Then undefined takes you to undefined mode. Free fetch about and data about takes you to about mode. Then IRQ takes you to IRQ mode and FIQ takes you to FIQ mode. Please remember we have seven interrupt seven interrupt will take you to five modes because user mode and system mode doesn't need any interrupt so when you boot your mobile phone it will be in 90% uh, of the time it is uh, initially it will be in uh, supervisor mode from supervisor mode it will move to the user mode that is 90% of the time it will remain in user mode unless and until uh, interrupt occurs when interrupt occurs it will move into various uh, different modes depending on the interrupt now, now uh, students you can see here, like let me zoom it, you can see here. user and system mode has got 17 register that is register r0 r0 to r15 r0 to r15 register r0 to r15 16 registers plus cpsr current program status register totally 17 registers are there so most of the registers in this 17 registers are called general purpose registers except a few like like lr link register you can see here lr link register uh, sp stack pointer then uh, pc program counter pc program counter so we know what is LR. LR is nothing but which provides a return address. You will come to know later. Then stack pointer which points to the top of the stack. Normally stack is a, we know a set of memory location used by the programmer to store data and which is accessed by using normally in Intel processor which is accessed by using push and a pop operation. But in ARM it is accessed by using store and load operation. 
so stack is accessed by using uh, in arm uh, store and uh, load operation that is the one thing you have to remember other than that uh, program counter also we know what is a program counter program counter indicates the address of the next instruction has to be executed and uh, in uh, 17 register r15 is termed as a program counter r14 is called as a lr r13 is called as a stack pointer register rest of the registers are known as a general purpose uh, registers now we have one more register here students you can see we have one more register here that is uh, CPSR. CPSR is nothing but the current program status register which is a flag register which indicates the various information about the various flags. Now, other than this, uh, we have 20 more registers. Totally in ARM, totally in ARM we have 37 registers. I already told you, told you about uh, 17 registers so 37 minus 17 is equal to we have 20 more registers we have 20 more registers as the mode changes most of the register remain same but few registers change its physical name so there are depending on the different mode like here you can see fast interrupt request, interrupt request, uh, supervisor mode, undefined mode and about mode. We have five link registers. You can see here five link registers. We have five stack pointer registers and uh, we have <coughs> we have five SPSR registers. So uh, like Five link register, we have five link register plus five SPSR, five stack pointer register, five 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 fifteen plus we have five more registers in the fast interrupt request mode. You can see here five more registers in the fast interrupt request mode. This 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 this. So totally we have. 20 registers here. So 20 plus 17 is 37 registers are there in ARM. We have 37 registers are there in ARM. Now student, user and system mode <coughs> is not different. Both are same. Most of the time your mobile or ARM processor remains in user mode only. Why I am using the term mobile because most of the mobile, modern generation mobile makes it of ARM, ARM processor or ARM microcontroller. So 90% of the time, 90% of the lifetime uh, like uh, ARM, uh, ARM 7 processor remains in user mode. When, the, when there is any system call, it will, make, it will move from user mode to system mode. To move from user mode to system mode, it doesn't require any interrupt. That means out of 7 modes, user and system mode doesn't require any interrupt doesn't require any interrupt like I can say system mode is somewhat uh, uh, like a, it is a privilege mode uh, so, uh, privilege mode of the user mode it is a privilege mode of the user mode where uh, because in the user mode uh, you are you have confined set of actions uh, but to do certain uh, uh, higher end actions you need to move into system mode you need to move into system mode so now there are other modes. Uh, like past interrupt request mode, interrupt request mode, supervisor mode, undefined mode and about mode. To move this to this mode, ARM requires 7 interrupts. So whenever past interrupt, interrupt comes, it will move into past interrupt request mode. Whenever interrupt request, uh, uh, whenever IRK interrupt comes, it will move into uh, uh, this one, interrupt request mode. Whenever <coughs> Uh, like uh, as I said earlier, uh, based on the particular interrupt, it will move into supervisor mode or undefined mode or abort mode. Students, we know like uh, in any processor, let me draw here, in any processor, like any processor, when it, like if the interrupt comes, uh, suppose, if the, suppose this is the, uh, this is the stage when the interrupt comes, uh, Whenever interrupt comes, it will it will go to the IRQ. Oh, sorry, interrupt service routine. It will execute the I, uh, interrupt service routine. Then it will come to the 
like uh, the next instruction has to be executed position so uh, you think like uh, uh, the processor is executing at uh, suppose the processor is executing this instruction this instruction and this is the next instruction it has to execute and when the interrupt comes it goes to isr interrupt service routine it will complete uh, uh, it will execute isr and it will return to the next instruction has to be executed that is the job of uh, uh, whenever interrupt comes the processor uh, processor uh, will do this one uh, do this one but in uh, arm sorry so when any processor move to the isr it will store the address of the next inst next instruction to be executed that will be there in pc and it will store that will dump that address into stack you know and uh, after executing isr it will dump the return uh, dump the content of st stack where it is stored the program counter address to program counter and it will execute the next instruction but ARM will offer us ARM will offer us the uh, access of stack because you know stack is a uh, memory and uh, memory access are slower than uh, slower than register so and ARM always supports register operations so what ARM will do is uh, it will store the address of the next instruction in uh, link register of the particular interrupt for example just think like uh, arm is in user mode which received it which it received a fast interrupt request it will move from this mode to fast interrupt request mode that time uh, it will store the it will store the program counter value it will store the program counter value in uh, lr lr of fiq lr of fiq and program counter is loaded with the isr isr of fiq isr of fiq and it will jump to the fiq uh, isr and it will execute that isr while returning uh, it will uh, reload the uh, link register value to the program counter and it will start executing the next instruction similarly whenever different interrupt comes uh, same procedure will be followed so students please remember when it jump to particular interrupt mode depending on the particular interrupt request uh, particular mode then program counter will be stored in the link register of that interrupt uh, for example if it receives the interrupt request and it jump uh, so, so, suppose if it receives irq interrupt and it jumps to the interrupt request mode then program counter value will be stored in lr of a irq similarly program counter value will be sometimes stored in lr of a supervisor if it jumps to supervisor mode so now the question comes what is the use of this lr so this lr cannot be used as a general purpose register it is totally it is a waste because from user mode you cannot go back to any other mode so from user mode you cannot go back to any other mode so this lr will not be used most of the time and it cannot be used as a general purpose register because uh, normally it is a link register it cannot be used as a general purpose register so now student we will move to the other information now student next we will move to the one more register that is uh, cpsr what is cpsr cpsr uh, let me write here cpsr means uh, current program status register current program status register what is the use of cpsr cpsr will store flag information cpsr will store flag information now think like uh, you are in uh, like your arm processor in user mode and uh, it has executed some arithmetic and logic operation uh, like uh, al operations uh, and some of the flags uh, have changed some of the flags have changed and those informations are there in cpsr but in between uh, processor has got a uh, interrupt and it will jump to the particular interrupt uh, and it will execute isr related to that interrupt uh. in that also it has it has 
it has modified some of the flags in the in ISR also it has modified some of the flag. After executing ISR, it has returned to the original program. Now you tell me whether you want change flag information or original flag information. Of course, we want original flag information when we return to the user mode. So for that purpose, uh, while jumping from user mode to the particular ser uh, in interrupt service mode, uh, CPSR will be saved in uh, SPSR, one more register that is saved program status register, saved program status register, it will be saved in uh, one more register, SPSR. And while returning, uh, while returning uh, SPSR will be copied to the CPSR. So let me take you to the screen. So suppose you are in user mode, if you, if you receive, you receive, uh, ARM processor will receive interrupter. Based on the interrupt, it will jump to the wash interrupt request mode. That time CPSR will be stored in SPSR. And uh, here, here, uh, if, uh, if it uh, does, uh, does some changes to the flag based on the ISR routine, that will not affect the original information, original flag informations are there in SPSR. After completing the ISR, SPSR will be copied to the CPSR. But you students, so, uh, like this we have 5 C SPSR based on the different modes. We have 5 SPSR. But we don't have SPSR in uh, CP, I mean user mode. Why? Because from user mode you don't go back anywhere. All these SPSR will help you to move back to this uh, user mode. But from user mode, you don't go back anywhere. That's why we don't have SPSR in user mode. SPSR in user mode. So that is the use of uh, SPSR. So students, we have discussed here now. We have total 20 registers. Uh, 5 LR register, link uh, register, which will return the uh, address, return address, which will, which will hold the return address. Then we have 5 stack pointer address. Then we have 5 SPSR address, uh, sorry, SPSR register. 5, 5, 5, total 15. And we have 5 registers in uh, fast interrupt request mode. You will come to know later what, what, is the require, uh, what is the requirement of this 5 extra registers in fast interrupt request mode. Totally we have 20 registers, 20 plus, 20 plus uh, 17 registers in user mode. So totally we have 37 registers. Uh, we have 37 registers. So students, uh, now the left out is a stack pointer register and uh, uh, the register related to FIQ, fast interrupt request or fast interrupt request mode. That we will discuss now. So here you can see in the diagram, you have stack pointer registers, uh, five, uh, five stack pointer registers in different modes. Each mode we have separate stack pointer registers. Uh, totally we have five stack pointer registers. Now what is the use of the stack pointer register? What is the use of the stack pointer register? Why we need five stack pointer register? Uh, let me explain you uh, with this uh, example. So student you think like uh, you are in user mode. You are in user mode. And uh, this is the stack. Think like uh, this is the stack. Uh, yeah, this is the stack. Now you are in user mode and in the user mode you have done some uh, uh, stack operation. You have done some stack operation. I, I refer you means uh, ARM processor by using push operation. So that time it will store the information in the top of the stack here. Somewhere, suppose this is a stack point, uh, the information is stored. This is related to user mode. Meanwhile, you got ISR, interrupt. You got interrupt, and that interrupt will make you uh, take you to the ISR. In ISR also, you have done some push operation. Think like you have done some push operation. That time, the information is stored in the top of the stack. So now the information here it is related to ISR. Because of some problem, pop operation is not been done here. Pop operation is not been done here, and you return from uh, ISR to your original program. That time you need your original stack, right? So you will get information from the top of the stack here. That is, 
you will get information from the top of this track here like this one and this is related to isr isr what you have executed not related to your uh, user user uh, user mode operation that means your user program here here bios improperly so in order to avoid that one uh, each mode here you can see as got <coughs> sorry each mode here has got its own uh, stack uh, stack pointer so that uh, each stack pointer point to the separate memory location in the memory so that when it jumps to the any interrupt mode or any operating mode uh, uh, like the information is stored in the particular stack pointer of that that mode stack uh, the inter, uh, like inform uh, information is stored in the particular stack pointer register of that mode so we have totally five stack pointer register so now la the last one is a uh, fast interrupt request mode so what do you mean by fast interrupt request mode or what is that fast interrupt request so here fast interrupt request we have a additional set of uh, <coughs> a new set of five registers uh, r8 r9 r10 r11 r12 this is a complete new set of registers uh, why we are using this one let me explain this one once again let me explain this one so you are in user mode once again you are in user mode and uh, you are executing some operations uh, and uh, registers uh, contain some informations register contain in some informations here you got is uh, interrupt request now it will take you to isr in isr also <coughs> isr also make use of register make use of register that means uh, your original register value will got changed so in order to avoid that one what you will do when you jump from uh, jump to isr of irq you will save this register you will save this register uh, in memory you will save this register in a uh, memory or stack while returning back uh, you will copy this one uh, from memory or stack copy of register that means uh, when you execute irq you need to save the content of register into stack and copy the uh, same to the register once you return from irq sorry isr but when you use fiq when you use fiq now when you use fiq fiq will take you isr of isr of fiq i will write here fiq now in fiq has got new set of register r8 to r8 r9 r10 r11 r12 five registers are there so it is a new set of registers fiq will use this new set of register that means sir, you no need to store and retrieve the original register into stack this will save you the time so that's why fiq is a faster than uh, irq and uh, in normal case uh, normal irq uh, interrupt request is used in critical case uh, fiq used when you use fiq registers are stored in new set of register registers are copied to the new set of registers uh, sorry registers will not be copied to the new set of registers uh, fiq will make use of new set of register for operation in isr uh, so original register will be maintained as it is so that's why fiq will be faster than uh, irq so students uh, so i have explained you all the uh, registers uh, of programmer model we have total 37 registers uh, it is 17 general purpose 17 general purpose register in, including lr sr uh, lr sp pc other than that we have 20 registers uh, so all these registers we have uh, revised uh, so thank you for your cooperation so we'll uh, meet in the next video with one more new concept thank you